Hi everyone. So I decided to do a, a new video or two or three about probiotics. This is a very controversial world, especially in the SIBO world. So this is not going to be entirely specific for the SIBO community, although I know a lot of my followers have SIBO. Um, it's still going to be useful for the SIBO folk, but there's a couple of caveats to doing probiotics with SIBO or post SIBO folks. So that'll be another video. But the first biggest question with probiotics, in, in my opinion, is which probiotic is right for you? That is like the overarching, big, mysterious question in the world of probiotics. And I'll tell you a couple of the, a couple of the ways that you could go about determining that and what I have ultimately landed on as of this point in time, as of 2018, what I do and why I think it works the best. So theoretically, you could do a stool test and see, hey, I don't have a lot of lactobacilli, so I need a lactobacillus-based probiotic. Uh, there's plenty of labs that will do this. Uh, Doctor's Data is one that I've used in the past. Genova has some pretty good tests. Um, I'm not sure if LabCorp would offer, offer something similar, um, but there's, there's plenty of tests out there that you can do this with. And I tried that for a while. And I don't think it really was that beneficial. Um, I got to a point where I was doing that and I would say, all right, you don't have any bifidobacterium, let's give you bifidobacterium. And I just wasn't seeing the results that I had hoped to see. And the deeper I got into this world and the more I started working with IBS and SIBO in particular, the more I came to realize, you know what, just because this stool test says this, it, it doesn't mean you need that species you might be low in that species for a reason, first of all, and it doesn't mean you actually need it. Um, similarly, there's a type of uh, anemia that looks like iron deficiency and it makes you deficient in iron. It doesn't mean you need iron. There's a reason for it. So similarly, that doesn't mean that you need it. Um, but what I've noticed is that stool testing is not as advanced and robust as we would hope it is in 2018. Um, there are tests, for example, that do culture-based testing, and a lot of bacteria die before they ever get to the petri dish. Once they're exposed to oxygen or in the travel to the lab, they kick the bucket. And then you're trying to grow something out of petri dish and saying, hey, it doesn't grow. Well, maybe it's a flaw in the test. So that's beef number one. Um, but, well, beef number one was actually you might not need that species. So I did that for a little while, didn't get a lot of a lot of good results with it, so I bagged that. And then um, there's a, a pretty big bandwagon right now that, that a lot of practitioners will say, okay, you have disease X, so I'm gonna give you probiotic Y, and there you go. And I mean, I, I only did this for a short time, um, in all honesty, so maybe I didn't play around with it enough, but to me, that just didn't resonate with me, and you can call this a bias, but it seemed very allopathic, um, it seemed very like, oh, you're depressed, you need Paxil. Oh, you have high cholesterol, you need, you know, a statin drug. It was very, um, very like going based off the condition and the symptom rather than the person in front of you, which is kind of the whole shtick of functional medicine, naturopathic medicine, holistic medicine. We all pride ourselves on treating the individual before us, not the diagnosis code that they have. So I think I just inherently had a problem with this method where, you know, you say, oh, everybody with fibro needs this one bacteria. I'm not convinced that that's the case. And when I was trying to do that a little bit more, I wasn't seeing great results. So what I ultimately landed on, and it was because of one of my SIBO cases that I ended up doing this, um, I got sick of using these really powerful tools in an inefficient way. And I know I've seen probiotics do marvelous things and I've seen them do nothing and I've seen them make people worse. So where do I figure out where to go with these really powerful tools? And I decided, well, first and foremost, we need to figure out if it's gonna be a probiotic that ticks off your system. If it's gonna, like with my IBS and my SIBO people, I need to make sure it's not gonna make you worse. <laughs> Um, if you come into me with IBS, with diarrhea, and then my probiotic gives you diarrhea, you're going to hate me. And that's not cool. So um, that was the first thing is I need to figure out which ones you're going to react poorly to and ideally react well to. So what I did a couple years ago now is I just said, you know what, 
whatever. I'm going to open one box of every probiotic I have, which is a lot. And I'm going to make little sample baggies and I'm going to send people home with like two or three capsules of a whole bunch of different ones. And we're going to see what happens. And I've been doing that now, that now for a couple of years and I really, really like it. Uh, so I mean, I have probiotics that were formulated for SIBO. They don't always work on every SIBO person. I have some that were formulated for like leaky gut and I don't think they work great on every leaky gut. So instead I send people home with about 11 or 12 probiotics and I say, look, here's the scientific experiment. You try one capsule a day, you get two or three days, depending on the person, you get two or three days on each probiotic and you're gonna keep a diary and notes of when you took which ones, how you felt, how your poops were, and we're gonna see what happens. And what I've noticed is with the, I think it's 11 or 12 probiotics that I have right now in stock. What I've noticed is inevitably one or two usually make people feel noticeably better. Like their bloating or their IBS or their diarrhea, something, you'll notice a positive change. Um, the vast majority of the ones I send people home with don't do much in the two day span. They don't have any negative or positive reaction. And then when we're lucky, one or two of them will be noticeably better. And ideally, if we have one or two that you reacted positively to, we just have you continue those. Like it's as simple as that. It's very scientific and it's very not scientific. So um, ideally, if there was one or two that made you feel noticeably better or less constipated or whatever it might be, I send you home with those uh, or one of them with the intention of rotating to the other one later. Um, if none of them made any profound difference, then I pick based on my favorite strains and what has been shown for, you know, leaky gut or what's been shown for depression, whatever it might be. Um, and that's, that's how I've been doing it for a while. And I really like it. And it's fun. The only drawback to like you as the people on YouTube is that it's going to be cost prohibitive to do that. And you probably have done something like this already and not realized it. If you've gone through six different bottles of probiotics that you bought and tried them and hated a bunch, you're already doing this. It's just that you're spending a lot more money. For me, I go through probiotics quickly and I see so much IBS and SIBO that it just makes sense for me to have this and absorb it into my inventory. And then I charge people like a buck a pill and that way I'm not eating my shorts on lost inventory, but it's also not cost prohibitive to do this. Um, so that's the only drawback is for quote unquote normal people who don't have somebody like me who's willing to do this it, it can get cost prohibitive to buy a bunch of different bottles of probiotics until you find the right one for you. But um, that is how I do it in my clinic and it's worked out really, really well. So that is my spiel on probiotics. I am actually in the middle of doing this on myself out of curiosity. My gut has been a lot more stable in the last few years. Like my IBS and my celiac stuff is very well under control. But I figured, you know what? I'm gonna try a bunch of these and see what happens. And I've been taking my little notes. So I will do a follow-up video probably in a couple of weeks when I go through all of them and I've taken my notes and I can tell you about my experience from like the patient's perspective, if you will. But so far I like it and it's, I've already found one that I think I like the best, but we'll see if the last few contenders uh, take that place. So I'll let you know what happens with that and I'll post another video.